Welcome back to Bayonetta 3. Last time we made our way through the world of Imperial China. And now yet another multiverse needs our attention. I see Viola's been playing Tears of the Kingdom. Bayonetta wasn't here to see that. You've only got nine lives, Kitty. That wolf dude's here too? Gotta find Luca quick. Now the part of the stream where for some reason this game always starts off choppy. <laughs> and then I change a setting that I swear I haven't changed back and once I change this setting it might be fine. <laughs> what you sniffing Viola? <laughs> I'm waiting for the settings menu to open up. I mean, you won't see it, because I'm talking about the one in OBS, not in the game. There we go. Try this. And apply that, and go. I don't know why I need to do that every time, and it slows down the starts of these streams, but whatever I have to do to fix it. Alright, so I started off on Thule, but this time with Viola. I'm up here, it's a book. I got a little platforming challenge right here. Ugh. Ah. I lost control, but I somehow didn't fall in the chasm. Take that as a win. Heart piece. This tree looks lonely. Put it out of its misery. Bring it in, big guy. You got it. Time to shine. 
I don't think I found this on my first playthrough, but I was noticing the cracked walls just now. Ah, right, we just got started. Viola almost fell off the island, but Cheshire caught her, and that's about it. It's been running around a bit since. Ah, the stream had a slight delay today because, because Mother's Day, <laughs> as you have just brought up. Yeah, so I went out and got some donuts in the morning, uh, and then I contributed to my mom's get a new chair fund. Uh, she wants a new chair, but a new chair is too much for me to gift on its own. So, just put money towards that, because yeah, that's what she wanted. You don't always have to surprise people with gifts. Sometimes you can just be like, what would you like, and give them the thing that they like. But surprises are nice, too, so that's where the donuts came in. Sorry, I have to remember how to play with Beal. Oh. Ah. oh, right, blocking. handed to me. Although if there was ever a parry, that was a parry. Oh, and then I extorted money from my dad so that I could go get us all ice cream in the afternoon. And so that's been Mother's Day. Nice little trifecta. I still live with my mom. She's downstairs right now. <laughs> That's not like I had to travel anywhere. Do anything super extravagant. Alright, you split off because I just hit you with Cheshire. But it's been a pretty darn good day. Especially the weather. Like it's starting to heat up for the summer. But today was a nice little cold front in the middle of all that, and I just hit you with Cheshire again. I'm not gonna regret that. No, okay. Fortunately, it doesn't split up again. What did I lose? Like, half my health on the first battle? <laughs> yeah, I was looking for where to put the key. You got it. Is it up there by chance? Portal over there. I'm just trying to figure out this temple. Bring it in, big guy. Ah, uh, let's see. As another reminder from yesterday, I'm not gonna be talking about Tears of the Kingdom just because it's still very new, very big. Not everyone's played it yet. I've dug into it a bit. But I'm also going to be... That's the kind of game that you're going to be playing for a while. So it was... Why I'm not interrupting any streams for it. But yeah, that game will still be there. And in the meantime, can continue... Bayonetta. The third. Okay, 
I've either lost my touch, or I really don't know how to get up there. I was almost on top of this one. Okay, and then, ah! Trying to think if any of the optional weapons from any of the games have been, you know, essentially a bayonet. <laughs> Whoops. Going for that collectible, and then I fell. Oh, hey, it spawned me right next to that collectible. Ta-da! There's definitely a way up there. Because uh, there's that floating box right there going between the two towers. Like, there's got to be a way to hit it. Uh, I managed to stand on that ledge. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. Extreme platforming. <laughs> Over here, Cheshire. I don't know. Maybe I could have climbed up from the inside because I'd already broken the inside down. Invisible ceiling. <laughs> Bring it in, big guy. Come back, Trash. Get him. Over here, Cheshire. Seeing if I could break this one. Fair enough, I can. I'm not quite sure what that accomplished. Now I'm inside this one. Have to break my way out. There's a rumor right now that Nintendo has absolutely no E3 direct plans this year. But at the moment, I believe it is just a rumor. It has definitely not been confirmed by Nintendo themselves, or else I would know about it. Oh yeah, it was definitely much easier to climb up from the inside. Right, now how do I get... There we go. Run in Rome, grab whatever this thing is. Uh, let's see. The old, correct me if I'm wrong, the only first party game that we know about for the Switch at this point in time is Pikmin 4. Everything else has been released. So in that sense, if that's all they got, then yeah, they would not really need an E3 Direct. Uh, it could also be... Uh, here's another wild thought, right? Nintendo may not have plans for an E3 Direct, but... They have now established a pattern where they're willing to have a partner Direct where, with no first-party games. Just be like, here's all the stuff coming to Switch that's made by other people. So perhaps the rumor is suggesting that while it won't be a first party reveal, that there could still be a third party presence for the Switch at E3, which is pretty much what happened last year, right?
Uh, oh, there's where the key goes. That's what I've been looking for. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the last couple partner showcases have been pretty darn good. Like, some major third parties in there. They could also do an indie world for E3. I know they had one relatively recently. Uh, with things like Mineko's Night Market getting a uh, release date. And Bomber Cyberfunk got a release date. Uh, limited time. No torture attacks. Get a combo. I guess we can try this. Hmm, true. I don't think the SMT5 one was the worst. Especially because, like, the yeah, SMT is a big, big enough series for the audience that is into it. And in addition to the SMT5 update that that one gave us, they had announced the SMT3 uh, remaster port thing. So definitely for some audiences, that one was pretty good. I think the worst one was probably the second one that they did during that series when the uh, partner directs first started being a thing. Uh, I don't remember everything that was in it. I just remember that the last game that was shown in the one I'm thinking of was the uh, WWE wrestling game and it looked really bad. <laughs> and that was the note they ended on. Oh, that was the same one? That shows what I know. I also might be misremembering. I am not getting a very high combo here. Yeah, hey, stuff like getting stunned is not helping. I think the worst crime was when they announced that Nintendo Treehouse Live for the first time in a while. And they had mentioned Way Forward by name, and then it turned out that the Way Forward game was a Bakugan licensed game that did not look good in the slightest. And that was probably worse than any of those Partner Showcase directs. But the E3 partner directs have always been solid. Ah, oh, I lost the combo. You mean the most recent indie world where they just ended on a sizzle reel? Cause I, that was fine, but I do wonder why Bomb Rush Cyberfunk's release date was part of a sizzle reel as opposed to just being the one more thing. It was at the end of the sizzle reel and everything. And you know, like if you were just casually viewing it was kind of blink and you miss it. If you happened to be reading the bottom left and noticing, hey, wait a minute, that's a date. We didn't have that before. I do think that one had enough good attention that they could have made it the one more thing. Okay, so we're not getting through the door. I'll start jumping around towards this tree.
Uh, let's see. I, for one, still have plenty of games, even if Pikmin 4 is the last first party release for the year. I've got plenty of games besides that to look forward to. They're just not going to be, you know, first party. Next month alone, we get two detective games. Uh, we get the new Spike Tunesoft Rain Code, and we also get a port of Ghost Trick. And since I've never played that one, that's practically a new game for me. <laughs> Which is why I'm counting both of them. <laughs> ah, you were supposed to land on the tree. Yes, yes, I've seen you place these. And well, I'm already into VNs with stuff like Ace Attorney. Like, same writer, I'm pretty sharp. Ah. Most people I know say it's even better. Uh, and then July we get Pikmin. And at some point this year we're supposed to get Fantasy Life. We don't have a window for that one, but it's supposed to be this year. Ah! Not do this, jeez. Right, this is the last try on this box before I move on. That is a bold statement. And so, that uh, very much enhances how much I'm looking forward to Ghost Trick. Okay. <laughs> I'm moving things along. Goodbye, box. I don't need you. Alright, well, this gate suggests we'll be off the island in a moment. So here's a couple loose ends. Number one, any skills that I may want to redeem. Don't have any witch hearts. I do have moon pearls, so I suppose Viola can have a little magic. And I think I already unlocked all those. Oh, I was on the Bayonetta menu. Uh, now Viola can have some magic. In fact, I'll give her two upgrades to make up for thinking that I was on her menu. There we go. Uh, this seems to be the last Viola skill that I don't have. Except maybe those with the locks. Deep Heller, yo yo. Alright, and checking on the Echoes of Memory. A gigantic man made island rises high into the sky from the ocean's surface, and in one corner of the island, a man stands before some sort of device, his eyes narrowed. It's been two years and eight months since I came to this place with the others, but today's the day. Uh, but today, our island of Thule has finally fulfilled its purpose. At last, we've gained control of the singularity. The fluctuations created by the rotation of five gears interacts with a dimensional distortion. Opening the entrance to Kinunga Gap, the abyss between worlds. What's more, by adjusting the fluctuations, we've gained the ability to choose a destination world. A feat that's never been done before. The device that we developed in concert with the Umbra is perfect. As long as we walk together, we have nothing to fear. There were many hardships and many sacrifices, but we will continue to walk along, unraveling the mysteries of the world of chaos 
and seeing that their sacrifices were not in vain. A glorious future is within our grasp. A soldier slouches in a chair, his legs up on a desk. Eyes closed, he lets out a deep sigh. And what the hell was that order? Abandoned base? What's going on? The place is classified, but it's still supposed to be a military base. But since I got here two months ago, I haven't even seen a stray cat, let alone any military personnel. It's been perfectly peaceful here. Kinda fucked up if you think about it. So why the order to leave? No reason given. I finally got used to this place. But there's something about that order that bugs me. They started construction at the same time. Tunnels leading underground, extra security shutters, some gnarly defensive weaponry. And everything done with automation, no humans necessary. Whatever the big deal is, it has to be underground. That's the one place I was never given clearance for. Alright, this is my last chance. Maybe I can figure out the big secret before- Hey, who the hell are you guys? Suddenly, the room fills with smoke as a group of men burst into the room and begin shooting. Onto the level proper. Anyway, if an Ace Attorney 7 ever did surface, I would hope it's got a little more... A little more going on for Athena, because while the fifth game was definitely focused on her to a really good degree, in the sixth game, she didn't really do much. Oh, I'm not the only person who was disappointed in Dual Destinies? Oh my god. <laughs> so many people that I know are like, Dual Destinies, great game. <laughs> I find it to be the weakest Ace Attorney. I think Spirit of Justice was a pretty good step up afterwards. I mean, yeah, yeah, Dual Destinies, mature rating... Dark story, blah, blah, blah. That, that doesn't save it from its less than qualities. <laughs> yep, that's how cartoon logic works. And, uh... Yeah, Viola is the major source of slapstick. <laughs> like, she is the cartoon character in this game. So if anyone has cartoon logic, it's her. I named this episode High and Dry. Now that we're in the desert, you probably understand the second half of the pun that I have made. Fucking really? Oh, just great. Now Cheshire's gone too.
Yeah, so our sword's gone. We can still do hand combat if we find ourselves in need of doing combat. Oh, didn't work. It must be too far out of range. Alright, where is the Sand Hill music from Sonic Adventure when you need it? Keep going. Won't see this. Do-do-do-do-do. Oh, hey, a scorpion. I don't know what Tremors is, so I don't have a frame of reference. Cheshire, where are you? Uh, so is that what inspired the Malduga? So hot. Can't see straight. I need to touch the mirages to get money. Yep, that's how deserts work. <laughs> can't, can't walk any more. Now this reminds me of a side quest in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> hey, the scorpion's back. I can't. I just can't. That was a sick flip. That's a tuba. Hitting straight facts about water. <laughs> I went to the gym today, as I typically do on Sundays. Now, with it being Mother's Day, it was the emptiest that it's ever been. Like, it was astonishingly empty. It was great. <laughs> Come on! Hey, we got our sword back. Hey, I guess our confidence also. Rebound when I block that. Pretty sweet.
Now, I, I had mentioned the gym because water bottle. Another good place to carry a water bottle. <laughs> Go there to sweat. Gotta rehydrate. Going sand fishing. Now we're tenderizing the fish. I swear I can't take you anywhere. You know, Viola's face looks good on a platinum. Said we've still been wandering the desert for who knows how long and exerting our energy. That time. I believe I'm supposed to be following the vibrations, which any viewers cannot tell what's vibrating right now, but... Still shouldn't touch those clouds, though. Somewhere in this area, supposed to be dowsing for water. And your controller slash his tail. At, oh, you can see his tail vibrating. That should help out the viewers. Come on, I'm so close. I had it. Oh, false read.
found it. It's a rainbow. Even when she gets her drink, she still gets tossed around. Cheshire. Ah, good luck on the chores. All right, what's next? Don't forget your shovel and your bottle of water. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be finishing out the desert section with the rest of this stream. Probably. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of seeds. I will check in at the shop. Welcome to the Geeks of Hair. Hi, that. I'll take another of those just in case. Bye, Rodan. Where are you, you mangy psycho? You better be okay, Luca. Like a huge river. Better steer clear of that natural wonder. Uh, don't worry, the moving sand is not instant death. You can jump your way out of it, but, uh, you know, it can be a little annoying. Oh, it's moving pretty fast. Better find a safe spot quick. Got a button mash to get through it. Alright, uh, hey. Kitty. <laughs> this is cat time in a different sense. Come back, Chesh. You got it. Over here, Cheshire. Good luck keeping up with this cat. Yeah, we haven't established that we're in Egypt. Just a desert somewhere. Or wait, did it say Egypt? It might have said Egypt. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Egypt, actually. But, you know. I forget if it actually said that. Oh, yeah, that would be it. Yep, Cairo, that is Egypt. So I was too busy paying attention to Viola falling down to read the words. <laughs> uh, if you can get the cat to that platform, you'll have it. Cute and really, really. But that was actually the third tier of blood, so hopefully you didn't care about me showing those locations. <laughs> Whoosh! Yeah, I can just tread the sand the rest of the way. Shit! It's blowing me under! Uh, Viola, we got out. <laughs> hey, more water! The only way it just found this place. Some interesting images over there. <laughs> 
more importantly is this box. Yo, it's me, Viola. Let's fight. Just keep coming. What jet were we flying? The multiverse? <laughs> Not a jet? Jeez, where'd you get the ball and chase? Apparently that counted as a block, even though I totally got damaged. Maybe I'll use some of those. Or one. One's good. <laughs> I think you can jump your way up there if you want. Totally possible to jump over this, but there's no reason to. Breathing at least. Don't worry, they're all gone. Are you hurt? Can you get up? Stay back! <laughs> Damn, my head feels like it's cracking open. Sounds rough, buddy. That voice again. 
voice? In my head, telling me to see the truth. There's only one truth. Looks like Luca took the red eye flight. Luca. Hot twist. No, it can't be. Okay, Luca. Funny joke. It's a little early for Halloween, though, don't you think? Come on, step out of it. Find his kicks very easy to block slash dodge. He did it again. And that was the story of Viola, defeated by Sand. I thought she was a pretty cool character at first, but I don't know, to be defeated by Sand? Ella's dead body is having none of this. Or, you know, this could happen. Pretty standard bayonet affair.
You're not invincible in that state. In fact, I did take some damage, but it's very powerful. The fight is so much easier when you can do that. Well, that wound repaired itself very nicely. Bully a little red riding hood, did you? Predictable. Wait! What are you up to, Kitty? You can't! You don't know who he really is. Impossible. Nobody understands him. He must run away from home. Each world the multiverse loses seems to be making it more and more unstable. That's why he's like that. Please, wait! If we can get to the Alphaverse and stop Singularity, we might be able to help him. Might isn't good enough. And at any rate, I only have three of you. Let me take care of him. I'm in no mood. Jokes. Please! You have to be the one to find all of the Chaos Gears. Look, I know how you feel. So? But trust me. He means a lot to me, too. He's a bit of a fool, and a reckless one at that. Always getting himself into some kind of trouble. But... He always pops back up with a foolish grin, or worse for the wear. This time will be no different. However, if he doesn't pop back up this time, I'll have you tearing apart reality to find him. Got that, Kitty? Yeah, I got it. No rebuking the Kitty comment sir. this time. Off you go. And hey, the name is Viola. Never mind. Don't forget it. Ah, fittingly, the Luca Award. <laughs> Uh, it's back to Ceresa herself. Oh, suddenly dropping free. Okay, yeah, definitely Cairo. I read it that time.
My new friends just keep getting taller. Castellanus. Alright, so you can't really get close to the tower, but your demons can, and they'll knock it down piece by piece. But you gotta deal with the mooks. Once it starts moving around like this, then you can take it on yourself. Oh, fool, you landed in my flamethrower. <laughs> Princess, you must not follow. Is that John? And Princess, you must be joking. <sighs> Anyway, definitely plenty of stuff you can go around and look at in this big open area. If you so choose, like for example this box. There was another box up there, but I didn't reach it. And I know at least one of the Umbran Tears of Blood is around this area. If I were to check the pause menu, yeah, the frog is definitely hiding around this area. You can hug around the edges of the map, listen for it. Or actually, it might not be this open area. It might be later in the level. Anyway, proceeding along the main path. Found to be some gullies down there. There's a safe point. It's about time I got moving again. I don't remember how to turn off the waypoint, but I had turned it on. 
please return and leave this to me. Well, guess we're going down. Venom's caress. Is your grand scheme simply to bore me to death? I made it clear you were not to follow. And when someone gives me an order, I just have to disobey. You really are quite the headstrong. I'll have to force you to listen then. Prepare yourself. Maybe I shouldn't let the frog land on me. Ooh, I dazzled them with um, Adam Butterfly. Oh, John's here to help. Lovely. I mean, this world, John is helping the enemy. For anyone not looking at the screen when I say that, our John did not show up. Our John is still doing those side missions that I'm not a huge fan of. Just to be safe, wrong button. Flashback. That is enough.
Those who know her has extended the challenge to me. I will meet it and then return. Have faith. I'll see you again soon, Princess. Well, of course, that's why I've come. I've always wanted to rescue the lady. Well, sings the song with the art button. If you can get through four parts, then you call down Poison Rain. Each jump is higher with the third reaching the highest. Ball is immune to poison and can swim through if anything. Ah, uh, one other thing I meant to do did not do is I'm going to change the B weapon set to the Dead End Express, the weapon we got from the War Train. Just to show that off in some capacity. Yeah, just a couple extra skills there. Yeah, you can see me holding what is essentially the train right now. It's basically a chainsaw. <laughs> and when you have the weapon equipped, your dash is this. It's like how you kind of become part spider when you've got the yo-yo equipped. Uh, that was back the way I came. Let's move forward. Do, 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 do free box. Ooh, lollipop might need that. Alright, so there's a lot of pods in here, right? If you can get through all of that, then the poison rain comes down, and in most situations, it's not a screen nuke or anything. It's more like dip damage on everything, but those pods were very weak to it. Do it. 
And there you go. There's some uh, balls attacks. And since we destroyed all the pods, we're good to move on. The witch heart piece. Radiatus. Having a really hard time dodging those lasers. Yeah, I like the train whistle when you're using this weapon. Not ball can deal with high up enemies if you just have her leap at them. Down the three pillows. At your train up the stairs. Break the pot. Also has a neat jumping dash. That guy's just dripping with personality, Murris. <laughs> Ching.
I got the poison ray knock. Like, I'll just eat a lollipop. He had more health left than I thought. Did you miss the giant demon frog we got? Because there she is. Froggy. Where are you, Froggy? Actually. <laughs> You know, I didn't think about that, but the desert world started with a big cat. And now we've got a frog. Oh yeah, that frog talks all right. <laughs> sure. I'm coming. Yeah, just a bronze Cheshire statue this time. I mean, I got golds and silvers, but I guess the skipped challenges were uh, bad for my score. So anyway, that was our introduction to Ball, but our temporary contract is over. So yeah, if you've ever wanted to play with a weapon that is both a train and a chainsaw, or a train saw, as it were, then the Dead End Express is for you. This looks like a place. That's the weapon we got after beating the China chapter. And you get to do this if you didn't see me do this earlier. And your extra boost for the jump looks like this. Just a straight up jump dash. No, it's not a bad movement option, either. Uh, if you were to detour to this spring over here, I'm actually going to show this one off deliberately because they do something funny with it. Hey, here's the frog. From, uh, you know, the Umbran Tears of Blood. That Oh, that's just a regular frog. Maybe if I keep looking. And up here, this is actually an optional fight. What I wanted to show was... There's a bunch of these regular frogs. So if you want the Tear of Blood, you have to find, you know, the real Umbran frog. And it's not hard to tell the difference, they're a totally different color, but... <laughs> That is, they're like, ha ha, there's more than one frog now.
Naturally, they would put the real frog in one of the harder to reach areas. Now it's around somewhere. I believe that's an echo of memory. Oh, I got a couple. At the entrance of a temple, a woman fights bravely to fend off encroaching homunculi. Damn, I can't let them get inside, no matter the cost. The others have already begun escaping into the depths of the temple. While she is determined to keep the invaders at bay here, she is outnumbered and overpowered. Just as it seems all is lost and a cold tendril of despair begins to twist around her heart, an eerie yet beautiful song drifts from within the temple. As she hears it, her desperation begins to give way to hope. Not fully understanding... Way... I think that's a typo. She begins to run toward the voice as instinct tells her it could be the only thing that would save her. However, as she winds through the narrow corridors, her hope is once again lost. As a brutal attack from behind knocks her off her feet, recovering as best she can, she tumbles into a large chamber, but the homunculi are relentless as they close in. As she steals herself to face what surely must be the end, the song drifts in once more, filling the chamber with its sound. The woman notices the room darkly darkened slightly, as red-black mist forms above the homunculus's head. The mist then thickens into clouds and showers them harshly with a venomous rain. The drenched homunculi then writhe in agony briefly, but eventually grow as still as statues before finally shattering. I didn't mean to close that page. Ah, <laughs> uh, blah blah, statues shatter. Watching all of this struggling to cling to consciousness, the woman suddenly recalls that an infernal demon with a love of song inhabits this temple, and an image of an incongruously adorable demon fills her head. As your fingers make have the oh, right. You seem to be in flight, but not aboard an airplane or even straddling a broom. In fact, you are holding on to the back of what seems to be a monstrous bird with exceedingly colorful feathers as it streaks through the air. On both sides, there are others in similar fashion on the backs of other birds as they fly in formation. Just a bit more. We're almost there. Look, that's where we'll set down. Hold on tight. The woman in the lead, riding on the largest bird in the flock, shouts to the others, gesturing far below toward what seems to be their destination. A tower surrounded by cliffs. The creatures plunge one by one toward the tower as if pulled in by its ominous aura. And their riders hold on with all of their strength to avoid being thrown. The birds show no sign of slowing as they approach the tower's summit. Their riders all brace for imp- Wow, a second one! <laughs> their riders all brace for imact. But it doesn't come as the creatures spread their wings and slow down with practice still, touching down with almost impossible gentleness. Their riders have also been safely delivered, but nearly all of their faces betray exhaustion. However, one seemingly unfazed woman gives a clipped order. We must hurry, we still have a long journey ahead of us. Already seated from the fatigue of their flight, none of the others show signs of stirring. With a sigh, she simply states, If you continue to sit there, the wild ones will think it's feeding time. Immediately, the other faces tighten, and they stand, starting to descend the tower. She laughs heartily as she watches them go, following soon after. I don't know, maybe people don't even know about the typos. I admittedly didn't really read through those extra bits on my first playthrough. I only decided to do it on a whim for this one. 
And that's just that section, by the way, with the extra little uh, story bits. That's to say nothing of maybe the enemy encyclopedias. I ain't sure. A game with a lot of text like that is going to have typos, but I'm just wondering how many people know about them. Because <laughs> how many people play Bayonetta and read all the uh, supplementary material on the pause menu? I'm sure a good amount who are like, you know, fans of the franchise really dig in there. It's not a non-existent number by any means. But I do wonder about like the majority. All right, I made that mistake on my first playthrough as well. I thought I could just jump over there, and then it turns out that's gonna kill you. <laughs> so we turn around. Time to give up and go home. Oh, the way home is looking a little different. Recognize the rancid air of inferno anywhere. An unexpected chill in the middle of the desert. Have some visitors from Inferno. Haven't had that since the second game. Damn it, didn't dodge the laser. Yeah, I remember this guy. I think he was in one of the previous games. Chainsaw and chainsaw fight. If this was in Texas, we would call it a massacre. <laughs> box is nice and open now. I'm the tower. I'm a train and I'm climbing the tower.
Now this universe is Bayonetta has like a whole story thing going on. Like, Dom is actually the one fighting the singularity here. Kind of proving herself stronger than this universe is Bayonetta. But then this universe is Bayonetta goes and summons Malthus. <laughs> He's not standing by. But it's an interesting change in dynamic for this universe to be like, oh, actually, Jean is the <laughs> bigger badass here. <laughs> to be clear, nothing against Jean in the main game, but the game is called Bayonetta. Kind of where most of the focus goes. So Cairo just does a lot to change things up compared to the first two chapters. I'll talk about that a bit more when we get to the end of this particular chapter. Anyway, Malthus is with us now. something more interesting in store. Well, I think he's got something more interesting in Temple because we still have to work our way through here. Oh, he made it to Giza. I forget, was there a Wind Temple in any past Zelda games? Like, that was in Wind Waker, right? Certainly in Wind Waker of all games, there was a Wind Temple. I don't know, I never really finished that one. Well, okay, note to self, the wind will kill you. There's a moon pearl over there. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I was gonna grab that and then I was gonna talk about what you're actually supposed to do in this room Is summon your new buddy I think you're supposed to summon your new buddy I've been misremembering this 
Wind is already blowing those things, and they hurt. I see this side door. No infernal entry here, it seems. <laughs> Oh, they want me to jump around in the zero in the low gravity room, eh? Oh, I can't have the bird collect them. Oh, well, so much for that. I've been failing a lot of those lately, and I'm just not patient enough to, on stream, remember how to do them. Because I am trying to keep this to a bit of a swifter playthrough and get, like, a whole world done each stream. So far, it's been working out. <laughs> When we do get to the blind run of Origins afterwards, that I'm gonna take slower and like actually look around at stuff. Cause that's how I play games my first time. I definitely did more looking around when I played this game originally. Took down my bird. I was trying to use him to put out your fire. I think with the wind we can. Uh, Malthus is gonna take a quick rest. I can see your point about, in general, taking it slow. You want to get your money's worth for one thing, and if you're having fun with a game, why would you want the fun to stop so soon? Uh, but, whoop. I just get a game over. Just saying that to a speedrunner. This is obviously not a speedrun either, it's very much an in between. <laughs> kind of reminds me of how in Earthbound, if your HP meter is going down and it doesn't actually hit zero, you can still recover until it actually hits zero. Wait, did I die? Oh, that made it look like I died. I mean, I'd imagine they have to play casually to actually learn the game. So that they can figure out how to speedrun it. <laughs> uh, 
I just like the mental image of telling a speedrunner, hey, you should take the game slowly. Oh, this is the room where they make you use the wind ability. I got confused because I had seen the windmills in the past room. I remembered that you do this at some point. Oh, got the door open. Ah, la 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 la. Oh, I saw that box up there. And I see this. What if I... Oh yeah, certainly some games will keep you moving. What if I re-equip you for a second? Is this the purple lollipop? Hey, up here we got the Umbran bird. Heading for this chapter. <laughs> Guess I can't break these coffins. I mean, don't people speed? I, I don't get. I, I know that was supposed to be a joke headline that you're talking about, but like. You know, the whole point of people speedrunning is that they enjoy doing it. Like, aren't they supposed to be having fun with the game even when they're doing an actual run? I mean, look, maybe if speedrunning becomes your job, like... Now, I make videos or streams about speedrunning this game, and that's my main source of revenue. Then sure, but if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it... Then I feel like it should at least be fun to challenge yourself to do that. <laughs> or else don't do it. <laughs> Suppose another example could be all the games done quick events. Like the people in those, I'm I'm sure they're happy to do it, but then uh, your prime motivation there is raising the money for charity. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why I stopped in at Rodon's. Oh, 
another one of these. Hello, Beyond Alive. How you doing? Welcome in. Alright, this was a fast one. Whoops. This is the Bayonetta Play 3 playthrough. I have played Bayonetta 3 back when it first came out, but I streamed the other two games. And I'm finally streaming this one. But of course, Bayonet is not the only thing you get here. It's a huge variety fest. Am anyway, I happy Mother's Day? Happy Sunday? Happy whatever sort of thing that you might be happy about today? I mean, it's a cool collection, but Ninja Gaiden doesn't really seem like my thing. Nor do I have any history with it. So, no, I can't say I picked up that collection. <laughs> I picked up other collections of other games. The uh, first one that comes to mind is the Mana Collection. Uh, classic Game Boy slash SNES RPGs. That was a good collection. We talked about Ace Attorney earlier in this stream, and that has a collection, but I didn't pick up that collection because I had already played the individual games. It's a bit hard to justify double dipping on a visual novel. They, they don't have a ton of replay value for me because I tend to remember most of the story beats. Like, kind of the point of playing those is to experience the story. Also, hey, you love to see the pure platinum. Does not always happen. I started breaking the box and already the enemies are coming for me. Got up. Pluck them from the air. wasn't fast enough. We were talking about games being, you know, faster, slow, and now the game is like, you're too slow to get a platinum that time. Uh, anyway, the bird can also grab stuff, so that's what we're doing now. Alright, looks like one small and one big on each of the scales makes a happy door. So many seeds in this little patch right here. Get him. 
above. Alright, how's my health? I keep hitting that button to check this menu. Optional challenge over there. Fight. Oh yeah, that uh, whole grabby thing we just did with the statues extends to the enemies. If you'd like to swipe any of them up. Alphys has got your back. He's your, he's your wingman. Alphys is also the second reason that I named the stream High and Dry, because, hey, we're in the desert, that was the dry part. And now we get to fly, so we get nice and high. Well, when you play the game in advance and know what's coming, it's a lot easier to give the episodes titles. <laughs> like, uh, the other game I'm streaming right now is Final Fantasy VII, of course, and I have no idea what, what I'm doing in that, or what happens in the game, even. <laughs> so, I don't really give those ones titles, because how could I? <laughs> the best I would be able to do there is make general puns, like, uh, Head in the clouds, or, uh, uh, a bunch of cloud jokes I could probably make, because at least I know cloud would be there. <laughs> and now I don't even know where I'm supposed to go next in the game, so that'll take some digging. That was the thing. I ended last night's stream just getting stuck. Oh, this part. Oh, this part. I hope you like Crash Bandicoot. I mean, all you need to know to answer uh, where I am is like uh, just the very ending. In fact, not even the very ending, because I spent most of the stream in one town. And the problem is I don't know where to go from there. Okay, I got the achievement for not getting hit there, even though I totally messed up on my first try. Go figure. Name of the bird is you have to keep flapping your wings to stay at the elevation you would like. Oh, they gave me a new lollipop. How sweet of them. That sweet pun was not intentional. <laughs> I only just realized it. Quite a collection. Enzo might actually shut up for once if he saw this. And yes, you do get halos just for walking around in this room.
<laughs> That's right, kids. Don't pick up those ground lollipops, even if you live in the sticks. Well, I'm pretty sure Sakurai said that he would like that too, so I don't think it's unreasonable. I forget which of his videos he said that in. Quite the treasure room they had here. It stops giving you free halos after a while. That's uh, it was a neat little touch. Well, there was a few more to be had in that box. Those walls were interesting. I believe if I approach this statue, something happens. Oh jeez, I'm full up on these materials, so I should just take some stuff. Uh, are you talking about the Mother's Day tweet? Because <laughs> if so, yes. Yes, I saw that. That was pretty funny. At least, at least if I make these lollipops, my pickups will actually be going towards something. The Ten of All is a mallet of rewards. No, wait, that's the name of the accessory. Uh, it's an item that if you use it before a fight, then the enemies will give you more money. Does it tell me what it's called? Midas's Testament. Yeah, there we go. Unexpected wealth. It means better money drops. Yeah, yay, we found the chaos gear. Woo! Now, honestly, I don't use the concoct menu as much because of the slight tedium of having to put everything in and stir. 
they're trying to give you the feeling of a witch's cauldron because you're a witch. But it's been that way since the first game, and I guess they just didn't want to change it. Move and dodge, avoid collisions, destroy obstacles with attacks. They just keep the set pieces coming, uh, possibly even more than the games that came before it. <laughs> that shooting section is not nearly as easy as the one on the train was. I think I did a good job against those lasers. Eh, ah, just a bit too much damage. I guess our contract with Malthus is expired.
Terra Stratus and Sierra Cumulus. And Egyptian John. Princess. Curse this damned war. Relax, John. I'm not your princess. But I did promise a mutual friend that I'd come for you. Sounds like someone has led a rather solitary life, doesn't it? Indeed. I will waste no more time on this foolishness. Uh, so guess what? We're on a pair of scales. <laughs> this room is a giant set of scales, and the demon's weight will tip them. If one side tips too low, everything on it can be erased from existence, because there's uh, clouds of erasure underneath us. <laughs> doing so much. I thought there was a certain mechanic about switching sides of the scale. Okay, so I'm misremembering how this fight goes. Because <laughs> I definitely thought... Absolutely, definitely thought that we were switching between Bayonetta and Jean in this section. To try and keep the scales balanced. Uh, but it seems like all you can really do is use Demon Slave to weigh down your side when you need to. Or, uh, you know, release them when your side is too heavy. <laughs>
this special to drain most of this last health bar. And there we go, we didn't sink, so we got an achievement. You see, in the last couple of worlds, the giant cloud monster absorbed that world's bayonetta. But this time they're going straight for Jean. Fails you again. Now, you've grown stronger than you know. Cereza. Bayonetta, who thought she was weak was at least strong enough to kill her friend. Rata Cumulus, who have come together, just like Bayonetta and Bayonetta. It's the spider's turn to participate in the giant kaiju fight. The phantom.
And he means it. There is a time limit. Anyway, uh, the spider's not the only one participating, though. Use the ZL button to switch between the Phantom and Malthus. The Phantom's raging bioreactor will explode after a set amount of time. Taking damage reduces that time. As for Malthus, and they're more powerful, but they're in the air. Right now, we're targeting that core, right? Taking care to dodge this laser. And at a certain point, it's going to retract. And it's up to Malthus. Grab attack has been replaced by Feather Missile. Alright, I forgot. Um, I'm supposed to be able to climb onto this. There we go. I think I was too late. Why not? There we go, just have to attack it here. Now I'm getting kicked off. Oh, frick. What do you mean? You have the core. Why'd you tell me to switch? a minute. And now I remember to climb on the arm. Just gotta go land the final hit. <laughs> that explosion he mentioned.
The phantom you self-destruct, it's super effective. Oh yeah, I remember when the black hole struck Egypt. <laughs> uh, Don't worry, Bayonetta. Bayonetta will save you. And now that the actual Bayonetta has fallen, <laughs> so too has that world. <laughs> and enticing but I think you can show me more so we take on the chaos gear we actually get to keep Jean's demon Val as well as the weapon she was using during that battle the ribbit libido uh, the ribbit libido is one that I should like because the weapon's a microphone it's a musical instrument for a weapon <laughs> But I can't say I used it too much in my original playthrough. But wait, you actually get two. <laughs> yeah, not just John, but also Egyptian bayonetas. Now we also get to keep Malthus as well as the fans that Bayonetta was using called the Simoon. And these are actually a pretty cool weapon. <laughs> So, at this point, the game just starts throwing stuff at you. It's like, ah, you thought we were just going to give you one demon and one weapon like we did for the past two chapters, but guess what? You actually get two now. So, if you're going to try and experience everything, it's, uh, <laughs> a lot to squeeze in. Of course, that's what multiple playthroughs are for. If you're playing, if you're playing on the same file, you can redo missions with different weapons and all. Uh, normally, I like to end on the side chapter, but this is the desert world was longer. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of story stuff is stepping up. So next time we'll begin with side chapter three. And then take on the new world, and oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, the next one. <sighs> Woo! Oh, the next one. Have a good night, happy Mother's Day. Wrong button. <laughs>